boys. Well, we're not doing anything. Mom's just working on the thing. You're supposed to pretend that the camera doesn't exist right now. This is just following our lives. There you go. Um, I'm doing the set list for probably the tour, the whole tour. Uh, so it's a good thing I'm doing it half hour before showtime. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. But um, yeah, I'm just I, because it's in it's in halves. I've got to uh, I've got to break it up, and uh, because of the way it flows and what I'm doing in the first half, second half, I need to uh, cut up some pieces and, and put them in different places. And that's always the hardest part of doing stand-up is uh, when I change, well, for me anyways, when I change the order, it's always, I can do fine, but as soon as I start changing the order, then it's, it's a mess. How you doing, Tim? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. Have a good play? Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, I forgot to call and tell you. We'll have the camera on us. Well, if I knew, if I knew there was a camera right here, I would have had my hat on, all prepared. Oh, no, it looks good. Yeah. Everything looks good. Uh, I come bearing gifts. Oh, you do? My daughter, Jade, she knew you liked <laughs> rocket candy. <laughs> Sweet. So she, she, she used her allowance and got your rocket candy. Are you kidding me? Oh, man. So here's my story. Okay. Here's my good story. This happened right on this flight, actually. All right. So I'm getting on the flight, and you know, when you're getting in, especially the, these smaller planes, you've got, everyone's doing like kind of the penguin walk down the aisle, right? Right, right. Three quarters of the way down the plane, this lady stops, and she's looking up at the her number, right? And I'm just like, oh my goodness, right? You know, like she missed her row, right? Right, right. And then I thought, I remembered that on the last plane I was on, sometimes the numbers, you're not sure if it's over the seat, or over the right, side. so I, I have to go like this to look at the yeah, thing. Yeah, you kind of look and see. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, so I'm, yeah. I'm like, oh, poor thing. You know, she's she's kind of figuring out is this 16 or 15, right? All right. But then she starts to come back towards me, mm. farther, and I'm like, oh. Then my heart went out for her. I'm like, like she overshot her seat her seat by a lot, right? Right, right, right? So she's you know trying to squeeze. Sorry, sorry. She's making her way back, and and I'm like, you know, you know, I've been on highways where your exit comes up quick, so this happens, right? Yeah, yeah. And then she kept coming. So she wakes her way all the way back, and then right before me, this this guy says, "What row are you looking for?" And I just cringed when I heard her response, and it was formed in the phrase of a question. It was one D, and I'm like, "How do you overshoot row one <laughs> by like three quarters of the plane?" What is this? Socks. socks. I heard it was going to be snowy out here. So I... Electronic socks? Yeah, that's our projector. Oh, okay. Um, and I got one more bag, but it's one of those, uh, you know, bags that look like everyone else's. It's a black bag, so I'll keep an eye out for it. <coughs> well, let's start with the beginning of the day. Uh, Tim's flight was delayed. Then Tim's uh, luggage was... Uh, Delayed, they call it, in an airline. That's their way of saying we lost it. So you haven't seen your bag? Because there's only two left now. Yeah. You sure it was black? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like red and black? Because there's black on the red one. Oh, no. It was black. Uh, then we found out, oh, it's important luggage that we need wires and such for. Um, so it's got the cords. To make this work, it's got the cords to hook this up to the Mac. Yeah. But I have the Mac and I have the projector. I just don't have the cords. Just make it really dull. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, no. That 
was gonna be my plan. Whoa, what happened here? Uh, they've moved, there's barriers where I normally turn. Actually, if we call this 1-800 number, they'll tell us where the road is. <laughs> okay, you're not supposed to be funnier than me. Sorry. I, I, I want it to be funny, but not funnier than me. Miles, then... Miles, my goal is to, is to actually win the competition. <laughs> so, see what happens. I have a feeling I'm gonna get voted off my own tour. Tim Boyle's comedy tournament, that's what it's gonna be called. See, I forgot you're a big uh, American Idol and Survivor fan. The, you know, you're the reality f uh, Oh my goodness. I wanted to get on Deal or No Deal, okay? <laughs> Did you send an audition tape in? I tried to, but I was late for the audition. So the next best thing was to try out to be a briefcase beauty. Oh, I heard you were on, Eric told me. Being 500 beauties. That's I even sick. got into the room. I, I was on ET Canada. I was in the, I was in the sun. <laughs> did you have a bikini on? No, but I did do a strut on <laughs> ET Canada in my boxers because one of the girls challenged me to a, to a walk off. Oh, that is funny. But it was it was it was it was fantastic. <laughs> but they actually let me. They they got me in the room, and so I got a friend of mine who filmed. We didn't think we were gonna get past the door, so <laughs> when we got in, they took his camera. So we just got stills on the inside. But uh, yeah, no, I, all those reality things. I love those. Oh, is that really it? I thought you wanted to me be on this tour and help out. No, when I heard there was going to be a camera and stuff, I was like, please, Eric, put me on that. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know if I want to take a briefcase beauty reject on my show. I've done a 13 city tour on my own before. So 20, there's only seven more. But you didn't just add one element, you added a whole other large element. Well, right? here's, okay, here's the thinking. You did a big jump. I wanted to do something, <coughs> uh, I wanted to do something for television so people could see what it's like on the road, okay? Right. Just to do that in and itself, I didn't think was enough. That's why I wanted to add the element of right. the tournament. Did my wheels just squeak? Did you hear that? Something is wrong with this thing. No, no, that was that cat back there. It was a cat that I ran over? Yeah. Okay, good. And then I had problems with my vehicle and it was locking up. Did you hear that? That was squealing. Yeah, it was. Something's wrong with my car. Okay, I need to, I need to test something here. Hang on. We're gonna have to do a sharp turn. Hang on, Dave. And then we're late, and we're, and like my, my car, yesterday we had problems with it, like the left brake was, rear brake was locking up, like you're just driving. <laughs> Looks like I'm trying a hot dog, hey! <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's locking up, so we took it in. Hey, there's something wrong, well, we Looks like nothing to me. <laughs> you're a professional. So then today we're driving again, and I got some problems again with it. It just keeps locking up, and so now I just, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we're brake torque for an hour. We just keep spinning around, I don't care. I, Nothing's wrong with it, apparently, so let's just go. Doggone it. I can't, I can't, I don't have time to take this in before we go get your lost luggage and get to the, I mean, it's just, before the tour started, I was saying to people, hey, um, if the tour goes great, hey, great, but if it doesn't go great, hey, it makes good TV, ha, 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 and now it's like, oh, not what I wanted. <laughs> Good. How are you, you doing? I hear you need a new car. Hi, my name is Chris Gersh. That's uh, G U R S C H E. Do, yeah, uh, give me something. So, uh, okay. Uh, the bits, how many of you have uh, ever held a newborn? By applause. Okay. There you go. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, and the biggest fear with holding a newborn is dropping, dropping the baby. Right. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, sure. I did, absolutely. Oh, did you really? Uh, it is. My, oh, I'm sorry, my, I'm sorry. You my didn't, newborn, you yeah. Didn't yeah. When, she, one month old, I dropped her. Uh, and uh, But, you know, she's 18, 18 now, now and an honor roll student. So I highly recommend it. So. <laughs> but that was the longest second of my life. And then when her head hit the floor, it made the sound of the cantaloupe when you drop it at Safeway. I know. And I just, I'm. Can I get a clean up on aisle four? There you go. There you go. That's it right there. Perfect. You guys are in for a real treat. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together from Vancouver for Chris Gersh. Thank you, Leland. Actually, I went up and did what I thought was warm-up, and it was like, man, this is really hard to warm him up. And Chris got up there and was boom, boom, pop, <laughs> popping him out of the park. And I was like, oh, okay.
How many of you ever taught somebody how to drive? Oh, yes. See, isn't that a lovely experience? I got to tell you, if I was a good parent, I'd send them off to Young Drivers of Canada. Or oh, there's just something about, uh, something about teaching your own children to drive. The, uh, oh, yeah, the near-death experiences. I just love those. Those are just fabulous. And um, so I'm teaching them how to, and the worst part is that your body doesn't lie. You know, and then you're, you feel obligated to make excuses so they don't feel bad. I, I know I screamed, we're all going to die. That's just my response to global warming. I thought I saw a cow emitting methane gas back there. Uh, Chris is a funny guy. I thought he had a great set tonight, um, which, you know, sometimes in an audition you don't know, but they seem to love him. Hey, you know what? Thank you very much. You've been a wonderful audience. Let's get Leland back on here, and uh, I'm not here. He's on the tour. He's on the tour. That's why I'm saying I'll talk to him tomorrow, and we'll get, uh, we'll get him even funnier. Uh, I'm feeling good. I feel good. I was a little, uh, I thought there'd be more uh, comedians than uh, just Leland myself. Uh, although Leland can carry a show, you know, he's got the chops, so. Speaking of water, I'm going to have some. I did a show one time, uh, well, I did a show one time. True story. No, I always make sure I have water on stage with me. I forgot to, I was doing a show one time, I, I forgot to bring water up and I was kind of getting a little dry mouth and I asked the guy that brought me in to, to grab me some water. Uh, really nice guy, super nice guy, and he's like, yeah, I'll get some. And he brought it on. He didn't want to take away from the show because I was still on stage doing the show. So he thought, oh, if I sneak up behind him and put it on the stool behind him, you know, that way he, you know. But by doing that, he was totally like, everybody was just watching this guy because he was getting carried away too behind me. But he was like. Microphone over here. So, no, because you're this close, you'd still hear something. I, uh, I just discovered something. Um, the keys in my pocket. <laughs> it hurts, I'll be honest, it hurts. Uh, some contusions of sorts. Right there. Um, no. But, uh, you know, and I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm pretty lucky to be married. I'm, uh, I wasn't very good in the dating scene. Not a, not a good dating guy. I was, remember the good old days of dating? Hey, remember the good old days? Grade one, right? You liked a girl, you ran up and you kicked her in the shins. It was that easy. Was that, I like you! <laughs> it was that There was a girl who used to pin me down and kiss me every single day in grade one. Eh? Every single day I'd get to school, she'd pin me down and kiss me every single day. I had no idea this was going to be the best year of my life. I didn't. I ran into her a few months back. It was like three months ago or so. We were, I was out shopping with the wife, and I ran into her. And she's turned into this just gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful woman. And I was like, hey, remember when you nice to make out? <laughs> then she kicked me in the shins. So, so did my wife, actually. So it was... Uh, I felt everything was rushed tonight. Everything, because everything that went wrong, it was just... Uh, but I'm a skinny guy. I'm a skinny, I'm a scrawny guy. Well, hey, just so you know, though, just so you know, underneath here, there's a washboard stomach, <laughs> okay? If you, well, if you can't rib cage, I guess that's a. You want that washed up? There you go. That's clean now. That's clean. But you, this, is, this is what, this is a real tour. This is what happens. Things go wrong, and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta roll with the punches. kind of share a vision of what I'm going to be doing, invite them to, to, to come on out, so hopefully that'll boost, boost some stuff. Hey, Leland, you have to tell us all about it, and you have to be funny, so go ahead. Oh. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I did this at, at Northview, which is the one that we were doing tomorrow night, and uh, I had, uh, my wife had said to me, don't do jokes, because they can see that in a clip, 
just share with what you're doing. Be serious so they know what, what it is that you're, you're serious about doing and then they'll understand and come. And I tried that a couple times and it was, you know, it was okay response. And then I decided, you know what, on the last one, I'll just do a bit before I start. Did the bit, boom, we had like 40 some sales that, and so it was like, okay, I gotta stop listening to my wife. <laughs> and when you'd come to the comedy shows, you weren't a dancing crowd to the comedy. But here you're dancers, and I just want to tell you that it's wrong. Uh, I, I feel led to say it's wrong, don't dance. My grandma told me, she taught me, don't dance, it's wrong. It's funny my grandma's so much against the dancing too, because when she got older, when she walked, it looked like she was dancing, you know? <laughs> this one I'm going to do, yeah, I'll do a bit, I'll do a joke, and then I'll share with what I'm, I'm going to be doing. It's going to be a, a great outreach night. Bring your friends, bring your, uh, you know, your neighbors, because uh, I'm, I'm going to share the gospel, but we're, we're also going to do, you know, we're going to do comedy. It's going to be done in, in a real fun, fun way, and uh, it's a great opportunity to, to bring people that you normally would say, I don't know if I want to bring them to something. Uh, this is the thing to bring them to. So uh, thanks very much for your time. We'll see you tonight. Linda Todd, L I. N D A T O D D. Okay. Um, yeah. So we'll do like tonight. We'll do five to seven. But if right okay. now you could just do two or three, don't worry how much. But I just want to see some and we'll go from there. Okay. Okay. You ever notice how in most families there's always one that's the skinny one and one that's obviously gets left with the title of big boned. Well, clearly I wasn't the skinny one. And I think it comes out in my comedy, these whole, you know, self-esteem issues, relationship issues, family issues that we all go crazy with. I've been through most of the worst ones, and I'm standing here laughing about it. So I do have something to say. And so recently, my sister phones me up and she says, hey, I have this book for you to read. And, you know, more recently I have better self-esteem issues, so I thought she had something that was inspirational, exciting for me to read. I was very excited. So I took the bait. What book is it? She says, it's the, the South, South Beach, Beach Diet. diet. Yeah. <laughs> do you say thank you? Like, what do you say? Because inside I'm going, what? <laughs> and on the outside I'm going, oh really? <gasps> that sounds interesting, tell me more. So she says, well, you know, I, I lost seven pounds on the South Beach Diet. Well, that might not seem like much to you, she says. <laughs> Not seem like much to me. Seven pounds? I could lose seven pounds just by wiping the cookie crumbs out of my shirt. I thought I lost seven pounds once. I jumped on the scale in the bathroom and I was down seven. But then I realized that I got my hip stuck on the bathroom counter and once I got it off, I found my seven pounds. Sorry, I just want to make sure you can all see me. Does this mic block too much? <laughs> I know I get lost behind these things, so I just want to make sure you can all see me. Hey, you know what? She did great. She, she went up there. Uh, Linda went up uh, right at the beginning and, and uh, started doing some stuff that, that you know, she didn't start with, and, and it, was, it was hit fine, and then she was able to flow. Uh, some of the stuff she said, uh, she didn't do that way in the audition, and it worried me a little bit. No! Seemed like much to me. Seven pounds, are you kidding me? I could lose seven pounds if I just brushed the cookie crumbs out of my cleavage. I know how much seven pounds is. She had said in rehearsal, she had said, I wiped I wipe cookie crumbs or whatever off my, my shirt and I lose seven pounds. And then we get into the live show and it's like, I wipe it off my cleavage. And I was like, what? No, 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 your shirt. That's what I want to say. She made her shirt, everybody. This, this guy is homegrown, and this is the church that he calls home. Very funny guy. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. For, are you getting on? He's right. Put your hands together for the very funny Stephen Leslie. Steve Leslie, S-T-E-V-E-N-L-E-S-L-I-E. All righty, take it away. A little while ago, I had to go return a birthday gift that my nephews bought me. It's a lovely, uh, I had to go return it at the dollar store nonetheless. Uh, I have three nephews, and if they were four, six, and eight, I wouldn't have a problem with the gift they bought me. But because they're 21, 21 23, and 25, 
they all coughed up 38 cents to buy me a white ball that's foamy. And they're like, just to let you know, it's a stress ball. Like a stress ball? I don't need a stress ball. I got other things to make me feel comfortable. But I think it's going to be fun, you know, I've never... I, I, I've done sketch comedy before, I've done uh, a lot of Christian theatre before. Uh, I did stand-up about 20 years ago. So, and everybody says, you know, you're a funny guy, you know, give it a try. And, you know, I, I want to give it a try again, so we'll see what happens. I, I'm, I'm excited. So, hopped in my car, put it in the seat beside me. Yeah, I drive by myself, I do have a seat beside me, but hopefully by the end of tonight. If there's any of you who'd like to join me, uh, I'd be honoured because I am looking for someone to carpool with. Uh, yeah, um, I, th I think he'll be, uh, I think he'll be fine. There's, there's some funny stuff in there. Um, he talked about having a, a Coke, or, you know, a drink, and he's gonna take it, and he's talked about having, bringing a pail, and I... I'm trying to be classy tonight, so I brought a handkerchief. Yeah, and, and the pink uh, blazer. It's a fuchsia. <laughs> a fuchsia, I'm sorry. <laughs> Really, I was hoping to be in Toronto right now doing the Canadian deal or no deal, and it fell through, so I decided to choose this. So, you know, they, they called me and said, a no deal. So. How's everybody doing? Oh, yeah. Sorry about the glove here. Uh, I, I'm a little sick. I got the flu. And uh, Leland has a big concert and stuff all, uh, all this month, so I didn't want to give him any germs. So, uh, no Michael Jackson impersonations tonight. This is my, my ground. These are my peeps. And uh, as you can tell, I'm dressed in uh, some of the classiest uh, clothing, uh, Brooks Brothers Summer Edition. Uh, actually, it's Sears Summer Edition, but that's beside the brother or beside the point. So I went to the dollar store earlier, bought my store, and, uh, bought myself a lovely handkerchief. Uh, you know, being that I have the flu and the snivels and stuff, I don't want you know, a bubble to appear out of my nose for you guys tonight. So I bought myself a handkerchief, but uh, I bought it about an hour ago. And it's already full. So, uh, if anybody needs to borrow it, I have one up here for you. I feel like I died. No, it was, it was fun. Uh, I knew that I, I mean, I blew some lines. Uh, I missed some jokes totally. I heard some laughing out there and it threw me. I got dry mouth and, uh, but I had fun. It was a blast. I remember the first time I had my, my man cry. It was during uh, a movie in, uh, in the 80s. Uh, any, any Star Trek fans? <laughs> Do you remember? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting teared up already. Do you remember the rap con? <laughs> At the end, when Spock is in the, in the area there with all the radiation, he's trying to save the ship. And the Captain Kirk comes to the window and he's like, Spock. What's going on, Spock? He's like, is the ship safe, Captain? Yes, yes, it's safe. He goes, and then the, the line that gets every man, he's like, the needs of the many away the needs of the few. Or the one. That, that's when men cry. That and, uh, you know, if someone gets hurt in a football game or something like that. It's a, it's a tough call, but uh, uh, this, this comedy business thing, and I don't know how uh, Leland does it day in and day out. But thank you guys very much. It's been a wonderful time. And you know what, if you don't like the answers, just let me know and I'll... Because I'm the kind of guy, I'm a, I'm a very principled person, and if you don't like my principles, I'm happy to take on another set. You know, five bucks, gets it done. So yeah, my applause. How many of you have children? <laughs> All brave souls, yes. And uh, how many of you, when you were uh, on this parentage uh, journey, uh, and the uh, way to get them out of the house, I uh, had them say to you, at some point, you ungrateful know, little offspring, uh, you are the worst parent in the world. How many of you have you ever heard that? <laughs> Thank God for teenagers. We'd have self-esteem otherwise. Uh. The last time I saw Chris, it was at a CCA event, 
uh, a Christian Comedy Association thing, and we uh, guys were getting up and doing some time and stuff. And I remember seeing him, and uh, my impression of him going in was like, eh, you know, he's okay. So then when I saw him last night in Richmond, I was I was pleasantly surprised. I was like, this guy's funny. I, you know, I'm here to take uh, lift the burden off your shoulders tonight and uh, tell you you are not the worst parent in the world. Uh, that's me. I, and I know that because uh, someone told me, and it wasn't a teenager, it was actually another adult, and well, they didn't actually tell me, they left a note on my car. <laughs> and I, I think it was a woman because the letters that were cut out of the paper were aligned in nice little neat rows. <laughs> and then it had, uh, you know, it was decorated with little flowers and curly cues and skulls and crossbones and die, worst parent in the world, die, die, die. The kind of thing you put together at a scrapbooking party. <laughs> Tonight it was a bigger crowd and they were a livelier crowd and he did a tighter set and uh, I thought it was a great, great performance. I would have actually liked more from Leland. I, I, I felt that coming into this comedy thing that there would be a little bit more coaching. I do that though well. Can you do it more manly? <laughs> oh, please. please. <laughs> and I can't help them get there in, in a day, but I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do my best. I'll, I'll give advice and hopefully they can... You know, it's all time. It all takes time, stage time. I mean, I had a warm handshake and, hey, you did great. It's, it's good, but how does that help? And she was mad at me because I had, uh, I had to duck into the uh, Wendy's to go to the bathroom and I left my one-year-old in the baby's car. We're starving here. Give us something, boys. <laughs> okay, good. Anything else? No, that's good. Okay. <laughs>